Why will this AI tool change architecture forever? As you will learn in this video, times are changing in the architecture industry. Throughout history, we have gone from text to hand drawing, 3D models, and architecture renders. But we are potentially about to see a monumental shift in the field of architecture with the surge of the AI industry. I just produced this render and it took me only 30 seconds and I maybe used only a, a few brain cells. It was created using Barrett's AI, which is an AI plugin that you can use for Revit and SketchUp. It allows you to render images real time and have realistic outputs in under a minute. Now I am not the first to be talking about Varus. In fact, I've actually made a few videos in the past about Varus. The reason I am making this video is because Varus has had a few updates and stepped up their game, creating a bunch of new tools and features that I wanted to show off. So before you start, make sure you create all your views in Revit or SketchUp and then go on to opening Varus. So you'll see in Revit, it's its own tab and you'll just start up Varus AI and a new window will open up. So one of the new features is this explore tab in Varus where it gives you some pre-generated prompts and ideas that you can apply to all your views. All you have to do is adjust the width and the height to get the right perspective of your image and these presets will generate automatically different results. And so for this one, we're gonna test the forest rain realistic preset and just give it a couple seconds to render. Um, you can do up to four renders at a time, but for speed, it's easy to do one at a time. Um, and then you can see up top, there is a prompt for each different one. So if you wanna use it, you can copy and paste. You can go to their form, go to their website, adjust settings and set a folder to where all your photos are saved up in the top right hand corner. And now that image has come in and you can see how it really keeps the form um, super well and starts adjusting the different things within it. To be the most realistic and most effective, you wanna switch your settings to realistic instead of shaded or hidden line mode, especially in Revit, to truly capture the correctness of the materials but if you want a full material override, then really the mode that you select doesn't have as much impact. And so the other tab is using the Compose tab. This gives you the ability to adjust geometry and how much the AI affects the design and the form of your building. You can adjust the material override if you want it to keep the existing materials or if you're okay with it changing them up based on your prompt. You can tell it if it's an interior render, an aerial view, add a bunch of nature or make it more of a moody atmospheric effect. And so it's just like a lot of the other AI tools with a text to image generation with the prompt, but with all these additional settings that help tailor to the best results. And so I'm gonna go with a sustainable house with wood and concrete materials, tree in the autumn season. And you can see it's really capturing the form, applying the materials correctly to the different objects and settings. One of the things that Veras cannot do is add objects that are not already there. So it's not like Photoshop where you can use the generative fill tool to add applications. So if you want a tree, you already have to model the tree in there. These are some of the other applications that Veras has on their website for you to use different plugins and different tools to help with your architecture workflow. So let's generate a few more images, just testing out the different geometry overrides, material overrides, and prompt strength. Each setting can be adjusted to your liking and tailored in a different way. At the end of the video, I'm gonna go over some of the settings that I found to be the most helpful, and I'll go through an actual blog article from Varus, kind of detailing everything that worked the best. As you can see, this one was pretty close to the original, um, but each one has its strengths and weaknesses. Um, you can also take a seed or a style from another image and apply it to future images that you are composing. So if you liked one, you copy over the seed and paste it in that seed lineup. And then whatever prompt or image you're generating will kind of pull from that style and implement it into this new recurring image. So I wanna kind of override all the materials and give it more of a change. So let's see how it works out. This image composition is definitely starting to come together with the trees, the background and the foreground all being rendered in a similar style. Let's change it up to get more of a raw, realistic image and change the facade to brick. So it added brick in a lot of spaces. 
but I don't necessarily like that plain front facade that's white. And so what you can do is go to the refine tab and you can select a specific area, kind of like the pen tool or the generative fill in Photoshop. And with that selection, you can change the prompt and it'll generate something similar to what you inputted into the prompt. And so I wanna change the shingles to a bit of more of a black tone, just to give more contrast between that and the building. And then I wanna change that white facade in front and make that brick. And so let's see how that kind of interprets and changes based on this prompt and the settings. And so you see it does a really good job of replicating that. So let's go to a different view. Perspective is very important in the case of using AI technology, finding views that are very easily found in real life. So from eye level or certain aerial views, because that's where the AI generation and the training is pulling images from, sticking to image compositions that are found very often within the real world. That'll help you make the best images possible. And so with this new view, we're gonna try out a couple more prompts. Um, you can see this is more of like a wintry vibe. It includes some snow, more of a foggier sky, somewhat at dawn or dusk. This one's more of a sunset. It's starting to bring the lights out from the interior and really showcasing the form of the building, the different materials and all that. Now let's go to an interior view and test out the same different tabs, but using interior settings. So with the Explore that we're using first in the video, there's three different interior presets. So let's test out the, the first one. And so as you can see, it kind of kept a lot of the materials that were existing as the prompt didn't have a lot of change in the settings or the sliders, but it definitely made it more like a rendering and a realistic image. We use this living room realistic preset and you can start to see it's giving us more of a, a different vibe and a different style. I wanna change the carpet as well as some of the furniture within this model. So I'm gonna use the refine tool and make those adjustments. I wanna make adjustments to these chairs and turn it into kind of a recliner to fit more of a relaxed vibe. And I didn't really like how those chairs were generated originally. So let's regenerate them so they fit the space a little bit better. And in addition, I wanna kind of create a a more realistic fireplace. So including some fire in that fire pit just to bring the image as a whole to life. And so if you don't like the original generation of the image, you can just do the prompt all over again. So this one's a little bit unrealistic with the way the fire appears. And so I'm just gonna re-render it. And how this one turned out is a lot more realistic, a lot more natural how it would be for a fireplace. Still a little extreme, but and so it's not exactly a man cave, but it definitely gives off more of a, a homier basement vibe with the brown leather couches and some of the wood finishes. Now let's try out a Japanese style interior architecture. And so whenever you're doing an interior render in Barris, make sure to check the interior box. This will help make sure that the windows and the lighting all make sense in the grand scheme of it. And that's a very well composed and well rendered view. I'm very happy with how this one turned out. Another cool addition with the new update of Veris is there's now a ability to launch and open it up on the web. So you can import images from your files, sketches, 3D models, things like that, and use Veris to use their AI and develop concept images. So first we're gonna use the Explore tab based off that 3D model and try to generate some images with those pre-existing prompts, just testing out what it can give us. This next one gives us more of a parametric exterior massing. I'm somewhat of a different style. It didn't fully render properly, but um, let's give it another try and see what we can come up with. So just another way to kind of test out images, test out styles. You can also bring in sketches that you've created and use Ferris AI to generate and turn them into actual images, actual compositions to see what materials might work, what different styles is best for the building. And so with this, it's, this is a really cool image. This is a really cool image actually, very insane with the lightning and the way it, it's showcasing. And now this image is completely opposite of that. Now I'm gonna do an interior 
sketch and see how Varus can kind of understand. First of all, it didn't really generate that first iteration very well, it just kind of did another blank. But then we used a different preset and it gave us more of uh, like a watercolory feel on the interior space. So we're gonna try one more and hopefully we'll get a little bit better result with these interior explore settings. So this one's really nice. I like how this turned out. It's definitely more of a more of a modern style. Everything's very clean, put together. Uh, definitely a really good composition. I wanted to test out this random image. It's more of like a visual composition, something very simple, just like one solo monument, but I wanna see how Varus kind of interprets the landscape, the architecture, and what it turns into given the prompt of a parametric exterior massing. It has its own style, so it's interesting how it changed it completely to fit more of the prompt that it was given. A lot of those buttes and mountains in the background went away and re were replaced with a grassland with a lot of buildings and lights. This one's more <laughs> something you can find in Antarctica, but more of like a modern civilization. Very cool though. I like how it's starting to be more creative with the different styles. Now let's test out sketch to render in the composed using a prompt. Sometimes it helps to adjust the width and the height to fit the image because it does crop it if you do not do that. It's good to have the material override all the way up on sketches because otherwise you get paper materials. You don't necessarily want the geometry to be super high unless that is in your best interest. So you're using this beach house prompt it's a little bit too blue. This one is more of a better taste with a very white style, maybe too much white. Let's hop into using a 3D model and then giving it a prompt. So let's kind of turn it into a New York City skyscraper with industrial architecture style, bringing in those interior lights and having them shine with a high quality exterior photography. So that image turned out pretty cool. It's a, a very moody, style because I turned on the atmospheric setting and I like that overall composition and the vibe that it's getting off. The windows have some decent reflections and the materials are more grayscale to reflect the industrial style. This one's a little too much atmosphere. It's almost too much fog. You can't see anything. Let's turn up the geometry override on this one and change some of the, maybe the furniture and the space a little bit and see how the AI can adjust that based on those settings. So this is gonna be more of one of those interior spaces in that skyscraper we saw in the previous image. I really like how it was able to take the prompt and run with it given the, the line work and the base image and definitely brought in some piping and industrial elements into the space ball, keeping it pretty clean. Now this one's really sweet, very, very nice and really good style, but I wish that on the left, that was a window and not a mirror. So I'm gonna go to the refine section, select that area, and then type in exterior window, looking out in the city, turn up at geometry all the way up and material all the way up so that it has the knowledge to adjust it all the way and not really worry about anything. And so that's a pretty good sense of how Varus AI works. I've tested out multiple different ways and now it's your turn to kind of take that and use it for your own benefits. Ferris AI is a great tool to just test what works at the early stages of design and potentially down the road, it'll be able to be integrated more as a rendering tool. But right now it's great for design iterations, testing materials, seeing what forms work and importing sketches, which can be really cool to not even have to model anything and turn that into a realistic image. I'm gonna leave a link below of some of the settings and sliders that work the best that have been used by Veris AI and developed by one of their employees. And they've kind of gone through a whole blog post of what works and what's the best way to do certain images. So check that out in the link below. Thank you for watching and welcome to the grind.